discuss with you. Thank you everybody for coming tonight. Um, I'd like to start with a presentation and, and comments. Um, we have uh, Bill Cole here from Gates Cole Insurance to discuss uh, crime policy for storage tanks. Bill? Okay. I'm going to come up and uh, sort of have a little bit of a quick six month review of everything you guys have right now. I have a little, little summary of everything that we've, uh, we've added, deleted, claims, knock on wood, you guys have hard time having any claims. So your uh, claim experience has been extremely good, that's a good thing. That way we can hold the rate because if we have 20% or less, we got a three year rate lock. We can use together and keep everything under 20% to pay out, which is roughly about less than 30,000 claims a year. And you guys are doing really well so far, six months into it. So, uh, and, and then you see a bunch of equipment that is used to casualty. If anything is under $100,000 in value, they don't charge you any premium throughout the year. So a lot of these things you see, no charge, no charge, because there's a uh, because that's, that's their policy, they don't charge you anything for that. So uh, you see uh, everything here, your three year rate lock, your low 20%. The law enforcement, that's 6276, that's for the accidental death and dismemberment policy. That's a three year policy, so it's really like 2100 a year. Then you see what's been added with the, you know, the different equipment and stuff. What's been added, the only thing we got really charged for was um, a freight liner because it was 181000 that was 1954 dollars and um, all the rest of everything else that was added and under that, that anyway, so they don't charge. And then, um, and then you see the claims where you get a year, 2300 bucks, um, $1,100 on the, uh, where you back into a park car direct center. Another one where it was, oh, somebody was backing, there was nothing, uh, nothing, uh, nothing paid out on the, on the bottom, bottom there. And, um, and another suit was sort of dropped. So in reality, you only had, um, $1,700 or $2,300, that's only $4,000. That's, that's been a great, great learning experience. So, so uh, then another thing um, down here at the very bottom, we we're talking about Paul, you said your architect said it's about $17 million to rebuild this building. Yeah, you can rebuild the wages. Rebuild the wages. To raise this building, we have $10 million on it now, the $17 million, and to add 800,000 of contents while all your tables, chairs, all your contents, is only $2,573. I'd recommend you do that. Do that now. That's not much. Uh, that's not much to increase. Uh, to increase it that much, and have it correct. And you have two hundred forty-four thousand on um, down in Butler Hall. So I don't know how long you're going to need that amount of contents down there. We can. We can. Oh, we're done down there. We don't. Know, we don't have any. So, so we just. We just delete that. We just so that will credit that down. I'll take that down, nice. Because contents is usually pretty not great. So delete the Butler Hall. All of contents? All of you still have stuff there? No, no? nothing. It's all we've, gone. we've been done since uh, December 27th. Okay, so we'll just delete. Has up 12 months up. Yeah. And we have no liability. We don't have any offices of any kind. Nothing in right there. No. So liability. General liability and the 244000 But please, for some progress. So we'll go ahead and do that. They'll take the 2573 down even less. It'll probably be a couple grand then to bump all these up. Okay. So what was our total contents before? It was two forty four. Two forty four down there. Okay. And so we've added eight hundred thousand in contents for here. That, that's what you sort of uh, mm -hmm. right? the total contents with whatever. Yeah, we're well, all set done. Everything, everything all is fine when everybody's in here. Sure. Yeah. So and let us know when you have other things when you close down the you know, police office and all that stuff. Just let us know and we'll okay. take them off. But we'll get that done in the meantime. So that was a major thing. I came over here the other day. I go, holy cow, we gotta make some changes here. Oh, so you make these effective tomorrow, Bill? What's that? You can, these are effective today. I can buy an inventory right now. We'll make it effective today. So we'll make it effective. So, so. Well, we're going to need a vote first. Yeah. I'll make the motion to accept the new limits. Motion by Rich. Second. Second by Rich. And then the only other thing we have is uh, for Wait, uh, get finish. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then there's only one other thing. Um, we did a broker record way back in the summertime, but they, they don't accept it until it's closer. This is for all the uh, pollution on the tanks that you have. And uh, it comes up on 127, so we need one like right now for that policy. And that um, is coming right up. And um, 
it comes up 127, it's only a $1,900 policy. It covers pollution, if you have a million dollars of pollution coverage on all your tanks. And, and then I'll be able to get the active policy and see what tanks it is, confirm it with REC and everything like that. So, because we don't have anything until we get this approved. So. Does that include our brain tank? Or is brain tanks and fuel tanks. It includes the brain. Yeah. It does there. And what we'll do is soon we get that policy and we get this approved, we'll go ahead and um, get the other REC and go through to make sure that's correct. So we have to make Motion by Dave. Second. Second by Rich. <clears throat> Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the only other thing, uh, we have uh, an invoice. We, we got a million dollar crime bond that we already, it's effective one one, and Gail has that. And then the other thing is um, you have access of one million dollars more over top of your uh, uh, workers' comp employer's liability. And we just had a few bits of information. We just need a signature and some updated information on the county self-insured. So I wasn't exactly sure what you guys had for work comp. So it's just about eight things that I highlighted for the help. So. Okay. So this is for the broker record. Yeah. Thanks. And that's and that's about it. Okay. So that's the broker record for the other thing, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 Can I ask you, we we had a person and Gail is well aware of this, who's filed probably I would say six to ten notices of claim uh, in the last Two months, uh, which are, I mean, you can't even read them. They're I know, totally, I know the claim. I know the they're totally nonsensical no about lasers and uh, something like that. How does that affect us, if at all? I mean, no, no lawsuits have ever been commenced. Yeah, and we have been to both carriers. We have been to HCC, and we also have been to Travelers because that's when the suits first started. Well, no suits have ever been well, commenced. I mean, they don't even have a lawyer, right? No, no, no. And then they're absurd. They're yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 20 I think, pages. I think they got some <coughs> some issues. Yeah. So that doesn't affect us, correct? They don't even have to. Yeah, well, you don't consider it a claim? It's not a claim? Not. Not really. I'll, I'll check. I'll check on the stats. Yeah, I want to make sure. But they don't. She just looked at all the claims and everything, and then there's nothing even popping up on that. Okay. So thank you. So that we'll that go back, and that's on your own travel, but it's not even popping up on that either. But I'll, I'll double check on that. But I'm very familiar with that um, situation, that individual, and it's, it's sad. I was it is sad. Yeah. Pray for that person because they're really got some issues. So thank you. Sad. All right. Well, thanks, Bill. Thank you very much. We appreciate all your business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have our Parks Commissioner here, Dan Trevisani. I just wanted to come up and talk about a couple of things that uh, we're looking to do this year in the park. Um, one is uh, they want to do a uh, sleigh ride. Come on up, so you're ready sure. to um, They want to do a sleigh ride in the park in Sherbrooke, and uh, he was going to discuss that a little bit with us. Yeah, as the year goes on, we'll propose a couple of things a year um, that we'd like to do for the community. But this year, uh, this winter, we figured we'd hold a um, kickoff for a winter in the park at Cheryl Brook. And uh, basically, it'll consist of a sleigh. All the kids love sleigh rides, right? It'll consist of a sleigh ride. Hey, try to sign it. We'll have the zoo. There, or we'll have some hot chocolate, marshmallows. You know, I mean, this is going to grow as time goes on. Um, already, I, I see a lot of interest already. I mean, uh, the gentleman here that um, gave us the price for the sleigh rides, he, I guess, he has a Facebook page. He put it out, and or it's already it's got about 900, 900 hits already. Again, I don't know who's going to show up, how many people are going to show up, but it'll be a nice little event. Um, if if they do not have snow, though, we will bring. Uh, wheels, heavy carriages instead of the sleigh, so we can still have the event. The only one that may not show, obviously, is if it's a, under 30 degrees, the Utica Zoo can't bring the animals out. That's about it. Unless, unless we can get them inside, and that's what I'm going to discuss with them. You know, we can use the, the chalet over there, the little um, parks office. You know, the beautiful, beautiful little spot in there. We can we can use for you know we can do the chocolate out of there and the hot chocolate things like that. But it'll be a nice place. Yeah, why, why, why not? Why not? And I, and I know, uh, uh, you know, you know, I know we were discussing about doing something with the building anyway. But um, but I tell you, I think it'll be a nice little event. Uh, we have a little bit of budget here. 
Um, obviously, we could keep it under $1,000. As you can see, the sleigh ride is about $850 um, for the three hours. And we figured we picked that date because it was at the tail end of the school vacation. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they get out of school maybe a day early, they go away, but they're usually all home at about that time. So we, 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 we hope to have most of the community here and maybe can, you know, join us in this in this event. So um, it'll be a kickoff here. We'll see how it goes. And, uh, you know, as we go, you know, we, we've been uh, talking to the youth at Commons, see if they can throw down their little mascot, you know. So, um, you know, there's some, you know, it, I think it'll grow from here. But anyway, this is a budget. Uh, my committee chair is not here. He's the one heading it up, uh, Mr. Kennedy. Um, what was the time uh, of the day you wanted to do it? It was, uh, it was 1 to 4. Okay. It was uh, February 23rd, yes. Saturday, uh, 1 to 4. Dan, uh, what about liability insurance? That's the most money to Well, we're obviously going to look into a liability insurance. We'll have to talk to you guys about what we'll need. I'm sure we can grab it. Well, does your slave ride? He does, yes. He, yeah. insurance? Yes, he does. Us and he'll give, yes. As an additional name, insured on his policy. Yes, he's also, yes. Yeah, I know the Duke yeah. does have it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the best thing. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, they all, they all carry that. So. Well, we did, uh, we did request that already, so I'll make sure that that's all set before we even go forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. We have a motion to approve the sleigh ride event at the Shelbrooke Park. I move. Motion by Rich. Second. Second by Dave. Discussion? All in favor? All right. All right. Okay, great. Thanks. Good job, Dan. Right. Um, well, actually, my dance here, too. I just want to go over uh, two more uh, things at the park. We'll go over it to see if you guys are interested. But um, phones actually been ringing off the hook for park events this summer. And uh, there's there's one uh, before Dan has to leave is uh, uh, Central New York Food Festival. Uh, they're interested in coming to the park. Um, so it's a big event. Um, it's actually the same people, uh, Gina. Uh, Gina Scampone, she actually runs uh, Utica uh, Summerfest and a few other events local in the area that are pretty big and have a good response. Uh, but she's looking to do a food event here, a uh, food festival. Uh, so that was one thing. And another one was an environmental um, day for all the high schoolers in the Nida County. It was put on by uh, Waste Authority. And the Waste Authority wants to come do a half day uh, at the park with all the kids and do a big environmental day. So those are two things that the commission will be working on if, if we approve it tonight at the board. Um, and there's many others that probably in the next meeting I'll bring up that uh, we've got a lot of calls on. So it's, uh, it's been great so far. I mean, the scouts are another one we're also looking at the jamboree maybe for the, for the, whole, uh, the New York State scout right. um, jamboree. We're, we're hoping. Again, these are just thoughts we have, uh, discussion that we've been having. But let me tell you, you have a great park system here and that why not utilize it, you know? Right. And I think this is the start, all right? All right, great. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate all right. it. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Okay, anyone else uh, like to present? Sir? Sure. <laughs> um, I've already emailed a call. My name is Scott Carpenter. I'm also being an email bridge. Uh, situation with the significance of property on the Hurricane Carl Boulevard. Uh, <clears throat> the issue is, is historical. You get a lot of rain in the backyard, the whole area, both sides of the neighbors, in the wooded area behind, floods out, terrible. I mean, I got pictures where I, you know, it's bad, I got to pump, I got to run a pump, it takes three or four days to pump it out. Um, I wasn't prepared to bring a copy of the tax man for all of you, but Paul is going to come and take a look at it Monday. Um, but I'll just briefly show it to you. Her property is here. This is Park Boulevard, Carl Boulevard, Central Turnpike. The issue is, if you look at the tax map, it looks like, oh, look at all these nice properties. The Park Boulevard ends here, and behind here, all of this is all wooded area. But because there's no drainage, when it rains, it, it just everything comes down and it floods in there. My neighbor's backyard at 11 Park, 11 uh, Carl Boulevard. Um, uh, 15 car Walmart. This is 
the red dot is her, her house. I added that, that's what, what, what would be Park Boulevard if it was physically there. But this is just to show that this is all that stuff, just wooded land. And what happens is, is when you get a lot of rain, we've had a lot of that, everything just floods in the backyard. And this is. She owns the land. She owns it. She owns the property. She owns the two parcels that would front what would have been Park Boulevard, but there is no Park Boulevard back then. She bought the two parcels a few years ago and they combined them on hers. Uh, so the flooding is on private property? The flooding is, is, is all throughout here. Is this road here? No. This road, none of this is here. None of this is here. Park Boulevard actually stops here. The dotted area is, I put that in there, that should be if Park Boulevard was actually there, but it's not. I looked at it easy. What's the source of water? When it rains? Is this is something new? No, this is a better store. Oh, that's the huge pipe back there. They came in and they put a pipe probably like this big. That's my backyard. Several years ago, she did an improvement in the front yard and had a ditch. She bought, she bought the corrugated pipe and then the town came in and laid the pipe down and filled against this way the front yard's level. The drainage is still there. But when they did that, they took the, there was a six inch corrugated steel pipe that went to the back. And um, they took that out and put a three, three inch PVC pipe in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where is your house in relation to that picture? Mm -hmm. How long ago was that? Did they change the pipe? Here. Yeah. I want to say at least 10 years ago. But this has always been a historical problem with the property. You can, you know, you can put a, a 12 inch pipe in there. The problem is, is because of all the, all the, everything that's coming down through there, <laughs> the, issue, the issue is, is I don't know where to go. So who, who owns the property behind you? I don't know already asked that question. And she is. You own all that. She purchased the two parcels behind yeah. it that would have, her, her, her two parcels, take one parcel, you know, 250 for parcels, make a honey flood. And hers runs far below. These two parcels she purchased two years ago combined at her property, they would have fronted what would have been Park Boulevard, the Park Boulevard area, but in there. So, behind this fence, she won't. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to upgrade the property and put a garage back there, but it's going to explode the garage. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. So, how far back behind this fence do you own? 100 feet. Just 100 feet? So, you own behind the 100 feet back. I don't know. This is her property. <laughs> yeah. This would be the this part here would be these two. She purchased these two parcels here. This front parcel of our there is no parcel of that. None of this is here. That would be right here. That's right. The shed right there. Be Do you know where the do you know where the water's coming from? It's all paper streets back there. Thank you. Yeah. Paper streets. There we go. That's exactly what it's going to be. All woods. Mm -hmm. And so is it now? I believe if we put the pipe right behind the house, no, 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 we'll 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 purchase the pipe. Mm -hmm. Yes, we Yes. My idea is, is the my thinking was that the is that if no. there was drainage, no. no. when you go to where Park Boulevard actually is, it's just like Carl Boulevard, it's laid on the side of the road. That they bought a little cheaper than because I found the mayor was back in 1923. Is it a spring? Have been drained there? Yeah, I'm not sure. It's got to be a spring. There's no place to go. Wait, there's that much water to break down. You said this before, but how this new problem this year, last year, it's been going on for a long time. Is it a spring? It's actually worse where it used to just like flood to the to where the fence is. Now it's all the way up to like halfway in the yard. So that's what we were about. That's, you know. So this is looking into her neighbor's area. That's half my yard, basically. <coughs> it's, 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 for how long? How long? This has been 
been a little for 18 years. Well, well, unfortunately, he's been pumping it out. People have pumped to try and pump it out to the set to the front. It could take sometimes three or four days to make pump it. Pump it out. And as soon as it rains again, or if it starts, the snow starts to melt, we're right back to school. Well, I have too much, too much. Uh, so you're just pumping it from the back to the front? Yeah, I pump it into the, the drain in front of the house. Didn't we take action on those paper streets a while back to take them off the land? We don't know. Some of them were on bare place that we could have done paper streets. Yeah, but I think we did stuff we did some up there. Up there too. Well, all I'm asking the question is that the town didn't do that job. You want to take a look at me on Monday. You know, a lot easier to show when you're actually boots out of town, you know, and uh, you know, get an idea of what, what I was thinking with my neighbors. We've discussed it on that, but I told them, I said, you know, we've we got no penalty, they can do something for us. Yes, we want to, I want to upgrade your property in the back and put a garage back there and there's a landscape there. But, but uh, how many other neighbors were affected? Um, definitely three. Well, I say three. Her to the other side. Because it's a similar extent. Yes. But what happens is, is when you go to. Um, that's, you can see that where our fence is, that's yep. the neighbors are over there on that side. And, yeah, that's the neighbors' side as well. So what happens is, is on the other side of, of uh, Matt Gallagher's property, he owns. That's the other side. You know, it's three parcels on this side, and what happens is, is this all straight up. So yeah. as, you, as you're going past this property, yeah. as you walk, like, when you're walking back there, there's a big park boulevard would be, there's a slow rise that goes up towards the Port of Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah.
police chief and sir checked it out and I think everyone's got the if they don't I, I got a hard copy of the uh, email that uh, he looked at it uh, I also went there and uh, uh, talked to uh, Mr. Toomey he was the only one that didn't sign it it wasn't because he didn't want to it's just that he wasn't available when they brought the petition around he has no objection to it okay we have a motion to install the two stop signs Motion to schedule public hearing. Um, the local law in step three is to be repaired. Um, so either yeah. the attorney or and or Mike and Sarah for the sign. We would need Prepare the legislation. Local law. Prepare the legislation. Mm -hmm. Well, the stop signs that in the past, I know that's usually come from your office preparing the legislation. Yeah, I'm going to need someone to go out and figure out how far. Um, Where the stop signs go? Yeah. I'll take a look at What okay. direction is they're traveling? I'll get, I'll get together with the superintendent. I'll get them. We'll get them. Thank you guys. Work well together. <laughs> Senior advisory. Um, I think Eileen sent the email out. Yes, and I just got that email tonight because uh, I had trouble with emails. Okay. But everybody else, I believe, has it, and uh, yep. I've looked it over. If okay. there are no objections, I would recommend that that uh, senior advisory committee be approved as written. Okay. Motion by Dave. I'll no second. Second by Rich. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, lastly, uh, council has provided us with a stormwater management project and proposal for the uh, Pierce parcel uh, with the hope of us being able to uh, build a retention area on that. Uh, it's my understanding that the Pierce's now have this and they're looking it over and hopefully we can take action on this in the near future. But, uh, thank you, Council, for very well. jumping on this. You're very welcome. Thank you. And this goes to that tax problem? Yes. Yeah, yes. 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 That's all I have. And thank you, Barb. Thanks, Barb. Thank you. <laughs> I thought that looked like you were <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councilman Woodland. I got uh, a motion. Uh, we have to bring up the uh, planning board member tonight. So, my understanding is that we had one application from Mr. Bertini. I would like to bring his name forward. Motion by Rich. This is to fill Peg Roten's spot before she got off the board. Her term expired, right? Correct. What's his first name? John. John. This was the only inquiry? It's the only one we've had on the website since the summer cycle. Do we post those in the paper? Usually? The position? Uh, Planning board? <coughs> I'm not, you know. Obviously, we didn't, but do we? No. Do we, like, don't we advertise? I think we should probably advertise that before we. Maybe just going on the website. Okay. Just. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, it's important that you get. Somebody, because at this point we have six, which means you could get a 
three to three to three deadlock. So um, I just want to point that out. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, I, but also, I think just out of fairness, it needs to be the proper steps to take it. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So, and he may be the only one. Do we put it in the town prior though, or do we put it in the OD? You do? Okay. Town prior. Um, the line, sorry. It doesn't have a lot of circulation. Okay. So I'm okay with that. Oh, yeah. Town prior. But it's our official paper. Right? It has to go with the official paper. And they, She was on both boards. What we're trying to do is get She's the, the secretary of both boards. Can let us know. At least the supervisor will know. Then we can decide on how we're going to go. Right. Or we'll just get it to Gail so she can put it out. I mean, that's the key, really, to get her to put it in the paper. Yeah, Dory always did that. Yeah. She would send that. Because I think we have another zoning board appointment, too, tonight. We were supposed to break. Oh, Miguel, you told me today there was a zoning board? Yeah. I think there was. By Ernie Lyons. 
And another planning. And another planning. Julius Fields. There might be one coming up. Julius Fields. Julius Fields. I know because they did. ZBA last year, I know, I think it was Fred. Fred was up, but nobody, we never did an appointment. Fred Keene? Yeah, Fred Keene. He was up, but there's been no, he just continues. But, so technically we had two. If we're doing it, but so we're off cycle here. So if we're going to do, if we're going to do paper, then now we probably should have to do both. Okay, so we have a zoning board and a planning board position to put the paper, correct? Who's the zoning board position? Correct? 
Thank you. 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 All right, uh, Rich, you got some uh, replenished petty cash? $80.87 for the town clerk. We get a support of a motion. Motion by Rich. Second. Second. Second by Dave. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a replenish of uh, petty cash for the finance department in the amount of $34.85. That is a motion. Second. Motion by Rich. Second by Dave. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a replenish uh, petty cash from the highway department in the amount of two sixty nine eighty nine. I'd like to have a support of the motion. Second. Motion by Rich, second by Dave. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And we have one from the police department in the amount of two twenty nine forty four. I'd like to have a support of the motion as well. Motion by Rich. Second. Second by Jim. <laughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let me just let them check. <laughs> okay, any other matters to go over? Um, do you have a discussion to suppress common law white ball doctrine and doctrine of incompatibility for the parks director? Um, I don't know if we spoke about this before, but uh, I know last year, just to give a little background on it, um, the parks director retired from the position. Um, as you know, when somebody retires from a position here in town in Hartford, we have a buyout and payout. Um, last year, he was uh, $71,000 for the total uh, salary for the year that was budgeted for that. When he left in, um, in March, uh, his buyout was around 50. Uh, so the whole salary was ended uh, for him and out of our budget for last year. Uh, so we didn't have an additional funding to hire a new parks director last year. So I took the parks director uh, position for that and tried to maintain the parks uh, while we found somebody. As you know, the board appointed me, I think in I want to say September, I don't know exactly what date, um, but it, it's come to my attention that there was a doctrine out there about incompatibility. Um, so um, Herb and myself looked into it and we, you know, the state said to make it, you know, everybody's happy with it. Um, there's a way to suppress the Whitehall doctrine and compatibility. It's actually done a lot in the state and there's a lot of places that, that have done it. Um, and um, Herb has put together a uh, local law for that has to go out to local law, and if um, again the local law is passed, then I'm able to do the parks director and also to do the um, function as the town supervisor. Uh, so Herb is actually going to go over that. Um, yeah, after the uh, issue was brought on, I did some research, uh, and the Whitehall doctrine that was referenced uh, comes out of a case. Uh, from 1923, believe it or not. And in that case, uh, a town board uh, appointed a town supervisor as a police justice. And it was a five-member board, which included the supervisor, and they all voted in favor of that. And the supervisor actually voted for himself to be the police justice. Subsequently, the court determined that uh, there was a possible conflict in that the board was supervising the police justice and he was on the board that was supervising himself. So that came down in a 1923 case that has been cited a couple times. Uh, when this issue first came up, I spoke to Council of the Association of Towns um, and the indication at that time was, well, if it's intended basically as a temporary situation, uh, you really probably don't have to do anything. I said, well, it's gone further than that, and that Paul is acting on a daily basis. And uh, I said, I wouldn't feel comfortable just continuing on, absent doing this the proper way. The proper way to do it is with a local law, which is perfectly permissible. 
So I have drafted uh, a local law, and what I'm asking is if the board wants to go forward with this and schedule a public hearing uh, as to whether or not to adopt this local law, which in fact supersedes the Whitehall Doctrine, and uh, it references the fact that the Whitehall Doctrine, pursuant to common law, has said that it, as a general rule, a body having a power of appointment not, may not appoint one of its own members uh, in the absence of precise statutory authority. And this is the statutory authority. It also references the doctrine of incompatibility in that uh, his supervisory duties as compared to his park duties may come in conflict. Uh, and uh, what the local law says is that the town board finds that the public interest would be served by the town supervisor uh, acting as the parks director in that he has an interest in developing and maintaining town parks, which he has expressed over the past years as a council person and supervisor. He believes the town, super, the, the town board believes that he's a good choice to fill the position as parks commissioner. He has a strong background in engineering. He's familiar with the day-to-day -day operation of the parks. He has a construction background, which will be valuable in upcoming projects, as has been demonstrated in supervising projects to upgrade the park and construct pavilions. Um, he will answer to you, the town board, on all issues. Um, that you all have the same goal, which is to provide a beautiful park for the town residents. Uh, the uh, town board does not want him to resign from his elected position to be uh, parks director, and that the town does not really have the financial ability at this time to pay our parks director a substantial salary and the benefits uh, which would be required, and he is offered to serve uh, on a voluntary basis. And the conclusion is that the public interest would be served by superseding the Whitehall Doctrine and the doctrine of incompatibility with respect to the town supervisor acting as parks director. So uh, I guess what we want to do is if anybody wants to move this local law, uh, we need obviously a motion, a second, and an affirmative vote, and we would need to schedule a public hearing as to whether or not to adopt it. So you're not adopting it tonight, all you're doing is at least saying, let's go forward and look at this schedule public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
So where does the our Parks Commission fall? I mean, it doesn't. It's nothing to do with the Parks Commission. This is but, the director. So, so the Parks Commission, when we formed the Parks Commission, and maybe you guys can make it wrong, but the Parks Commission was there, like other commissions in other areas, where we develop activities, programs at the park. It's not for the day-to-day. -day. So like a Parks Commissioner is not going to go down and tell our union staff to go paint up a house or go paint something or, or fix this or take complaints. They're, they were there to, to generate, again, the programs that they're generating now. So they're, they're going to do the sleigh ride event. So with the help of, again, I mean, myself and the workers that are at the park, we're going to get ready for them, but they're going to put the program together. They're going to advertise it on Facebook. They're going to advertise it on our website. They're going to, uh, you know, make the connections to to get the activities going. So that, that's that's not part of this. But that's what the commission's for. This is for the data activities. So I got four guys in the park. You know, what's our plan for today? What are we working on? Are we putting in lights? Are we, are we repairing things? You know, taking the complaints from our office and, and again, getting them fixed. Like we got the letters last time, you know, lady called in, had issues. Two days later, everything was fixed for her. She said how beautiful was she? She wish other towns would have responses. So, so, you know, those, those are the things that, that, that I do every morning. I go check on the guys in the morning. I set their schedule. I, I approve their time sheets that they're working. Um, and again, on the budgetary uh, issues, again, I'm bringing it to the board. So the sleigh ride comes in, you guys are still approving that, even that it's coming out of contractual for the parks, but I'm approving that. But if something breaks that's you know under our procurement policy during the day, I'm, I'm going to have the guys go to Home Depot purchase it, fix it, so it's not, you know, we're waiting for the next meeting. So I, I guess that's really what it is. So the commission's more of a activities, putting programs together, uh, maybe running the food festivals, running the sleigh rides, putting together things, activities for kids or, or grown-ups, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Again, the day-to-day the -day building pavilions. Um, you know, Dan was here. I had a meeting with, you know, the commission. I stopped by and spoke with them. You know, they're not going to help build the, the pavilions. They're not going to help, you know, get the fences installed. They're going to go out for bids and do RFPs and write the bid specs. And they're not, that's not just, I think that was the original understanding, just as you Right, right. So just just so everybody knows, you know, that that's that's where we're at. So again, this here would be again me running it. But again, it doesn't have to be. I mean, you know, if we hire a parks director, then he would take those those functions on, you know, for a cost, of course. But the object was, you know, to keep our everything budgetary, you know, in, in good standing. Last year, we we made some some changes, and I took on the position again, saved some money. So we could do other things. Again, we could do the slate, right? To do that, and that money is going to go towards that instead of the salary. So I, I guess it's a you know give take kind of thing. Um, so again, if, if if we don't do this, I don't want it. I don't want it to be a bad thing because the parks are nothing but good. So I want the commission to be looked up on good or something that we do at the parks a good thing because again, it's it's my time and it's my voluntary time. It's free. The last thing you want is to get you know crucified for doing free voluntary work, right? So so you want it to be a good thing for the community, which again, people have been very happy. I mean, the phone's ringing off the hook to want to come do programs at the park because they hear things that are going on. So again, it just we're doing this to to make it so no one can say anything bad about it. You know, we follow the process. We thought it was the best idea and we went with it. And again, if the board or the public comes, you know, for the local law and says, you know what, we don't want Paul as a parks director, and that's fine. Then, then somebody else will come and we will hire them and they will take over the parks. I mean, so with that though, I mean, wouldn't it be easier because that's an option that could happen? Just rescind the rescind the vote. You are still the acting, I mean, you're, you're as, su as supervisor, you have that vote. Oh, he's a responsible but he's, he's not the parks director. That's a position, the parks director. And I think one of the reasons Paul wanted to go forward with that is because he's meeting with these guys on a daily basis saying, you do this, you do that, you do this. And I, I think it gives him more authority if he's the actual supervisor director. Yeah, I think more, you know, more authority does he need, in my opinion. I'm not picking hey, Paul. Please don't no, I, listen. Because I know you've done a great job. I, and, 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 but I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, are we going down the road we should? I, 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 I thought I understand. understood you to say that it would, the Association of Towns felt that it fell under his preview. I have supervised. Well, they said clearly if 
if you don't have a parks director, he could, in the interim, be responsible for delegating. But I don't want to get into what the union contract may say as to who the union, they're all union guys in the parks. So yeah. I don't want to even, I think we need a parks director, period. I mean, you've got to have somebody who's in charge and is delegated to the responsibility on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't just leave it open. He's the overseer, right? I mean, yeah. That's what you basically yeah. said. <clears throat> yeah. But I think we could accomplish the same thing by rescinding and, and understanding that you have the authority to meet with these people, to spend money up to, and bring everything back to the board anyways. I think that's, that's cleaner myself. Listen, I, here, here, here's my thing. And again, you're doing a great job. No, 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 I, I appreciate it. Here, here's my biggest thing. I'm doing it as a voluntary thing, as a free thing. I, I don't want any more grief from this. You didn't understand what I'm trying to yes. so, so again, if, if, if I become the parks director or I do as a supervisor, I just want it to be over. I, I don't like negativity for good things, right? So everybody wants to always bring negativity to something. I Me, mean, I like to bring positivity. No, no, not you guys. I'm just saying in general. So, why do you, okay, so you say negative. I don't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. Well, who cares? All right, who cares? You're doing the job. You're doing it. Well, you know you're doing Here's it. Here's the perfect thing. We know you're doing it. It's a small job. town. So, if everybody's, you know. Yeah, here's your shoulders. Listen. No, 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 no. I'm not worried about that. But if, if the process isn't done right, I want to do the process well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
and that's it. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's done. And, and I can get stuff done and keep going moving along and not be slowed down by, you know, stuff that's non productive. That's all. Someday down the road, if there's a new supervisor and they choose to not want to be involved as much as you as Parks, obviously they're going to just sit and go back, which they can do. Right. All he's doing is putting his footprint down on what he's been working on for the last year. Anyways, it's a great direction. The law says, in order to keep delegated authority of the supervisor, in order to keep the town functioning in between town board meetings and address day-to-day -day issues, the town board may delegate the power and duties of administration and supervision of the town to the supervisor. That's what you did. But you, by saying he was the parks director, that's what created the firestorm, that's right. and that's why we did the law. So again, again, to your point, a way to correct it is rescind that title and you continue on just as you're doing. Because then I think you're opening yourself up to union grievances that he shouldn't be delegating the way he is delegating. I mean, this... So your advice is to go on. Absolutely. All right, I'll let you get this uh, motion. Schedule the public hearing with the local law. Yeah, let the residents decide what they want. I mean, if they don't want it, then I don't care. Okay. It's, it's a voluntary thing, you know? It's, it's, but what do you say, Parks Director? You did not vote. You voted on acting Parks Director. Correct. Right. So this is making him Parks Director. This is a local law which would allow him to be appointed as the Parks Director. Then you would have to make a motion. If the local law was adopted, then you would have the statutory right to appoint him as Parks Director. It's a two step process. So right now we're only looking at the public hearing. That's all you're looking at. I'm just trying to point out, Rich, too, it's just all hypotheticals. Because if the room is full with names, then, then we hire a person. Listen, it's less, less of my shoulders. Right, but what I'm saying is, you know, then, you know, I understand from a union standpoint what you're saying is you have that. But that wasn't brought to us even before. We right. mentioned that, well, in fact, we have that power. It wasn't stated that long. Well. You know I, mean? I agree. You know, but um, I didn't think it was an issue. <laughs> Listen, when I called, I, I spoke you got to the same people. Who heard it. And no one and seemed to have any issues with it, but I don't want to have any. Because again, when you do something for free and you volunteer your time for the for the for the good of things, the last thing you need. Is somebody said, we didn't follow the process. Well, here's the process that we're following it. And again, if, if, if we don't follow the process, I don't want to be part of it anyway, because I like to follow the process. But again, I'm not a municipal attorney from, you know, and, and so I, I, don't, I don't know every process for every situation. So again, we, we, we did the research, we heard both, it was so funny because I said, Herb, I got something. He goes, I got something too. We had the same documents in our hands after we both did the research and we even talked to each other. So this is what everyone's come out with to make it legal, right, you know, professional, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. And, and this ends it. Again, at any time, you guys can vote to get me out of being parks director anyway. So this doesn't lock me in. I mean, this is the same thing as having a... It's all it's done is giving them the authority at this time. To but there's no questions being asked. I mean, it's just, it's, like I said, just been, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. With a bad thing, it's different. You know what I'm saying? But the, the parks is a good thing for our community. And, and again, supervisor, not supervisor. I got kids, and I want to see the park be the best it can be. So that's why I do it. I don't do it because it's a power trip or, or something that you know I can care less. I mean, uh, on that. I mean, my thing is it's just to make it a good thing to follow the process the correct way, so no one can question the process. That's all I want to do. I, I want to end questioning the process or, or, or how I got there and that I want to be in control. It's nothing to do with that. It's just we do it right or, or somebody else does it. But I'm not going to be in the middle of the chaos. So, again, you know, just taking it. No, I, no, I agree. I know. So, just because he has the, the title and he goes with the thing, he's parks director. Or acting parks director. You know, yeah. The, and he is the town supervisor. And he goes, and he plays a union. Isn't there a conflict between the two? Well, that's why you're passing this legislation. Right. To say it isn't a conflict. 
but but isn't it cool? Correct. It would be. Uh, no, I don't believe it is. No. But we're doing it well, I understand. right by the book. Well, I just want to say you know, it's one of the same. I'm just on this all through because sometimes we've got that and then you know, I'm just trying to think all these things through. Like There's going to be a day where the next supervisor or whatever isn't going to want to do all this. Okay. So it's, it's, it's going to rescind and go back to back. Well, he just and you guys can change this every year anyway. anyway. And the group's doing it. Every year you guys, I mean, you guys can come next week and say, you know what? Well, you weren't a problem. You don't want to. That's up to you now. I, I just wanted my thing tonight to bring up was do the process correctly. So you don't take a good thing that's a good thing for our account and, again, make it a negative thing. Because that's all I try to do is avoid negativity. Because, again, when things are positive, everybody's excited. Everybody wants to come. Everybody wants to be part. But when negativity starts setting in, it, it's, it's tough on the staff, the workers at the park. It's tough on the people that want to come to the park. So again, just try to make it positive. This is a way to say, you know, again, even the residents has had a, a choice to come out and see if this is what they want. And if they don't want it, that's fine. I, no, I mean, no loss. We hire somebody and we move on. But if they don't, everybody wants me to keep doing this and do it. I just want it to be a good positive thing because again, Volunteer. It's not. It's not a paid position. You know what I mean. So I don't want to volunteer my time to get it. You know, hammered when there's no reason to hammer it because it's for the parks. It's for our community. So that that's really the thing tonight is to say, do we want to follow the process or do we not want to follow the process? That's really it. And when I when we both call, you know, again the town association board and and this, whatever we call, we call them and this is what they told us would make the process stop. That was it. This would be it. And if you guys, again, wanted to rescind it in six months and say, we don't want Paul's, you know, Maybe parks you should advertise for a parks director and see what happens. But you'd have to put a salary for it. Oh, I understand. Right. Okay. And if, it takes, like it. if it takes six or eight months, or even if we don't fill it till next year, but maybe we should advertise for a parks director. That would take a little off of you. Whatever you guys want to do. You don't have a budget. No, no, no. Oh. I understand that. I don't mean to fill it right now. I'm just throwing it out there. Like I said, it's up to you guys. I mean, to me, I enjoy the job, but, you know, again, it's a voluntary thing, and it's been working. So, I don't know. If it doesn't work, you get somebody else to do it. I mean, it's not bad to have a public hearing and find out what the people are, are saying. And it's, if they're in agreement with it, great. And if they're not, then you can always go to Plan B, which is down the road. But I mean, that, that's what we have you as counsel to find out. Thank you. What's going on? I mean, you know, you don't want to be your own lawyer. I don't no, I don't want to be my lawyer at all. Like I no, said, no, I mean, to ourselves, yeah, yeah, right? right? I mean, that's why we hired I mean, you got us the information. So. I think they're saying that's the most prudent way to go based on the situation that we have at, at this time. Again, my biggest thing is I just want to end the uncertainty. That's it. Just, you, you know what I mean? It is. I appreciate it. If, if, if I'm going to run it, it's appreciated. If I'm not going to run it, that's fine. But let's hire somebody to do it so we can, we can keep the momentum going at the park so we don't hurt the program that's all because again we got a lot of good things going on and it's come a long way yeah i mean it just it's not hurting the process you know so but again this this was something that was brought that can end it all and, and, and be done with it and then again even if it is and we go to local law to become a parks director six months from now you might say you know what i think it's a better thing to do to hire a parks director and then you hire a parks director to separate it yeah you could so it's salary Second by Rich, discussion. I certainly want to follow the process and I'm open to see what the residents say. Yeah, me too. I agree. Any other? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. You're scheduling a public hearing, Kelly? Yeah. I'm going to give you the original. When would be the next? Um, February 6th. Ah. February 6th. Thank you. Okay. Um, next is. Um, Cash payments for the parks. Um, I don't know if everyone's seen, but we put the um, new website together uh, for parks. So now we can take uh, electronic payments and checks for pavilions, uh, dog park, um, and also the youth summer program that was that was very big last year. Um, a lot of people bring cash in. It, it makes it tough. I know we had some issues in the past years um, that people, you know, some people said they paid, and then you know there's issues. Um, so I'm, I'm asking the town board that we just do checks and uh, online credit cards and in-house credit cards um, instead of taking any cash for those three uh, programs. Did we any get any issues with that checks in the past? Um, we've had, we, we charge them a fee and then they can't come to the program anyway. Um, so most of the time, we, you know, we take small amount. Yeah. Yeah, and with the electronic uh, check one, it, it, it gets taken out of their account automatically anyway, so it gets debited actually. But uh, the only thing with the cash is it's, it's just a you know accountability thing, you know, recorded. And, you know, it's didn't we last summer uh, for the summer program? Did we do this? For, if we didn't want to did we make a motion? We didn't. Well, no, now because the pavilion rentals are now online, so I added the pavilion rentals and the dog park. Um, the summer program we did take cash off last year still. We made it after the fact. But I just wanted to confirm it that all three, because all three have little icons on there to, to, to click on. So now when you click on it, it's, it, you know, we don't take any cash. And if they come into the office, we actually go on the web to process and it prints out a bill and then there's no, because another thing too is like the, um, the summer trips, when you go on the buses and stuff, they're paying all that cash, now they can actually go online and list, and it has all the dates of when the kids, when they want to go on the program. So it, it all goes in there, and the parents can pay one time and know all the dates that they have to go. No, no, no because I, I remember bringing up the fact that. Yeah, I just hate taking cash for anything. I was, I was, no, I, I, I mean, yeah, and then, so that's why I thought someone wanted to stop that was after the fact. Yeah, it was after the fact, but I wanted to just re reconfirm that now all three of these items will actually we'll put little signs up and we'll go cash for the I, I just think it's a safety thing. I mean, I know last year Carol had thousands of dollars in the drawer, you know, from the stuff and everything. And I just think this way here would just be easier and smoother transaction. So. You don't need a motion on that. I think I do. Yeah. To take cash only. Not accepting. Not accepting cash only. So moved. Motion by Dave. Second. Second by Jim. Discussion. Um, All in favor? Are we going to? Aye. 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 Just oh, sorry. Are we going to notify the summer program people about this? Or anything? Yeah, it's, it's actually when they get their quarterly newsletter, it's going to be in there. And it, instead of sending six pages of the registration form, it's going to be on there. They go right to the internet. And they, they, it's going to be the same as the swim program for the kids. Yep. So the New Hartford swim program is all online now. You can't go pay anywhere else. So they, they have the web address, you just link on it and you go and pay for your kid for the summer or for the swim program. So it's the same the same thing, but you know, as you know, like even last year we sent out like seven pages for the uh, the youth program, which you know, I mean that's a five, six thousand dollar, you know, mailing. <laughs> so <laughs> But we'll still have those pamphlets in house, but we're just not gonna mail them out. We get a lot of people sign up online. We'll still send out a quarterly newsletter, but it'll be in there instead of yeah, the it's it's yeah, And then they can download the forms at any time and bring them in or whatever, you know. It all looks the same. So. Okay, it's all set. Okay, uh, you need to approve a credit application for police station for printers. Um, 
It's only $241, but uh, Lisa does a credit application with them so they don't have to pay up front. And uh, since it's a credit application, I need approval to uh, go ahead with it. It's with uh, you, Inc. So moved. Motion by Dave. Second. Second by Rich. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Gail, that's new, new aid credit application. New aid, N E W E G G. Uh, I have to prove the uh, uh, contract for general security uh, for the parks. It's a one-year contract with General Security for $180 for the Elm Street Park Security. Um, one-year contract for $180? Yeah, well, there's two here. So there's one eighty, and then there's a um, yearly monitoring agreement for two seventy-five forty. dollars For the full, it's four fifty-five forty dollars for General Security for, um, for the Elm Street Park. What are they doing? Um, we have security on like the doors and stuff, so when they ring, um, it goes to the police station. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's for the security, so this a lot of times, you know, it helps you get a lot of break things. Right, right, yeah. That's so. Interesting. so if I can have a motion to sign the contract for one year, some of general security. Motion by Rich. Second. Second by Dave. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, me and Dan have been looking into converting all our vans uh, to bonds. Uh, we talked about that at a uh, meeting a few meetings ago. Um, as you know, interest rates are going up. Now is probably the right time. Uh, we spoke with the bond uh, people. They said that the interest rate probably in March, if we go out to uh, the bond, would be about 3.7%, which still works into the numbers I gave you uh, at the beginning of the year when we purchased the building. Uh, that would include the building, all the equipment we purchased, uh, also the, uh, the Grange Hill, till the road project, we'll put them all together and uh, consolidate the one bond so we get the best rate. Um, so, uh, Dan, I don't know if you want to add some extra info. Uh, yeah, she, I think they actually think that the rates might be more like 3.5. Okay. And, and she said that you know, if, you, if we ban again, the ban rates are actually going up and rate more than the long-term bond rate. So you know, she thinks March actually would be a good time when most of the bond the bands are due. Um, she thinks that, that we won't see you know, any rate increases until June. So you know we've had a few of these bands since 2017 and at some point we've got to you know convert them into permanent financing. So that's what we're looking to do. And just just so you know I spoke with Anaranda Bank, Adirondack Bank, the one band for this building really isn't due until the end of June. And there, I spoke with Rocco R. Curie and another person there in their finance department, and they would be willing to work with us and let us redeem the band ahead of time without any kind of penalty or anything. So we can roll everything together into one large bond offering. Adirondack's been great for us. Yeah. yeah. If you do that, can we do better than three point five? Uh, I don't think so. I, that that's considered. That was you know, with considering that in there. So so also too, you know, looking back um, when I gave you guys the numbers of where we were when we purchased the building, there was you know the three years of spikes. And taking into consideration we had no major disasters in the town of Hartford or something happened, that would keep the rates and everything, that would keep the, the, uh, the money exactly the same uh, going into the next three budgets. So I know there's a lot of people had a lot of skepticism about wait till you go to bond, you know, you're going to get hit with all these extra uh, payments. But by doing it now at that rate, it'll actually be even to where we are. So, um, you know, those spikes will be okay. To, yeah, we can absorb those, um, so the money's there for that. But um, so I don't, Dan. Do you need a motion for us to, to uh, go forward on that? I, I don't know. I, I don't 
think that necessarily, but by the next meeting, February 6th, we'd have to have a formal bond resolution that ORIC would put together because you have to have it, have it published in the paper. And if these bands come due March 7th, so we'd have to have a formal, you know, we'd have to have to go ahead, I guess, to get ORIC to do the bond resolution. So maybe we need a Yeah, you need a resolution to yeah. go forward with ORIC. ORIC will then prepare the bond resolution. What could we do? You don't have that at our next meeting? We can't. Well, we don't have the bond, the bond resolution, you know, formal bond resolution. Yeah, the bond resolution. Right. I understand. You're going to move to go forward with the work. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we'll bring that to the next meeting as a, as a formal bond resolution to do this on the 7th of March. So moved. Motion. Motion. Second. <laughs> I'm not going to get in a fight then. <laughs> Double water in the chat. Motion by David. I'll second. Second by Rich. Discussion. Discussion. <laughs> so, what does that do after that? I find you know, the ratings that we do take the bands and the bands. How is that going to address that? Well, it will be. So, I mean, so the level and the rating and. Yeah, the, the rating is going to stay the same. It's not going to change the rating because the, the finance is still out there. It's just in a different form. So there's no, there's no rate change. Um, and actually, too, when we spoke to them, because the building value is more, is actually a benefit, too, for people to look at. We have an asset that's more for value than what we've, uh, what else? Yeah. And we still have to ensure the responsibility of the rating Right. It's a plus. Yeah, it's a positive. You know, they, they, everybody's confirmed that we spoke to again. It's, it's a win-win all around. And again, this three spikes that we had that I gave you out, those spreadsheets and all that stuff, you know, that, that's being absorbed because of the rate of the 3.5 anyway, so. Um, okay, so, um, so now we buy it for Green Show and we have some money back from the county on that, is that correct? Correct. We're supposed to do we what we do well. So the bands that we went into this one bond are Grain Shell, 900,000. The certiorari's from way back when, 325. Uh, Tilden Ave paving, 350. The equipment that we just banned for 2018 was like 1.8 million, 1.38. And then the town hall, it's a total of like almost 7.5 million of bands that we're gonna con combine into one bond. So where I was going to go with this, if we get money back in the county, Green Shell had all that construction and, and, and the trucks were up there. It's kind of a hazard, even for the buses. It wasn't really much. I mean, you might know anyways, but I'm just trying to figure out how to go to United Street to public. Yeah, exactly. How so the money we get back has to go towards the bond. So what we're doing is, when we had those three years of spikes, that first year, that money that comes in from United County, which I think is what, 80? Uh, no, 220, 20, 20, okay, so that, that will go towards the payments off the bond. So any money that we get, rich trucks, when we get the grant from DC, that money again will go towards the payments of anything else. So it goes into a debt service fund to pay on the bond. What I'm saying with bond, is there a way to bond for Bridge Hill or anything like that? Or do this? Or no? Well, I mean, you could, we'd have to look at the numbers again and see what, I mean, right now there's no, there will be no tax increases, no rate, I mean, there's no hikes at anything where we're at. Um, but anything we do additionally, we'd have to just look, um, because also too, um, and I was gonna bring this up, you guys had me look into the side parcel for this building, so I did, I had uh, uh, the Fraser, uh, Frank Donato, we always use them in the town for years. I used Frank Donato to go out and do an appraisal on that. I have that for this night too. I want to discuss that because that might be an interest too. And then also the chilling unit uh, might be an interest too. I don't know how you guys want to go. But if we go through the power authority, the interest rate's 4.5%. Um, again, if we, if we go with this bond, it's three and a half, but the savings from the chiller would be the payment anyway. So. It kind of offsets itself. We can actually save money on the, on the back end of the chiller. So again, I'm going to go through all that, but maybe we can go with your information. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. But but let's look. We could do that at the end and then see 
if we all agree on all these three of these things, we can pool them together. You know, if it, the rate's that low, because everybody's charging us a higher rate for the other stuff. So, you know, I, mean, I want you guys to look at it, brought all the proposals and everything. And then we can make a decision, and then we can find out in the next meeting I can bring is exactly, you know, where we're at, uh, you know, money-wise, and how much more would be an increase. So. Yeah, just want to throw it out in the back of this Right. Yeah, no, I agree. Now's the time to do it, and then, yeah. you know. Is there enough money in that Grange Hill project to finish it? Well, the green, I think he's talking about the roads, though, oh, right. but you can't use it for the roads for the bond. Right. So it's a different. Yeah. <clears throat> but if, 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 we, if we get money back on the county, we'd have to make the payment on the bond. But the bond would be. Well, again, you can't, you can't, it's not like a regular loan to pay down principal. The payments are set for the 30 year term. So the payments that you make. Um, well, we'd have to use the money towards the payments. You have to, whatever we get back from those, like right now, this building, if I get 50 grand back for a grant, just say, that 50 grand has to go towards those payments. And then what I'm saying is, is if we buy it for 900, Maybe we did use all 900, and then the, the county has then pays to one that pays a thousand nine hundred. Is that what I'm understanding? Correct. If we get the money before we go out to bond, then we just pay it down before we go out to bond. But if we bond and we don't get the money until the summer, we have to use that money for payment. So. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, here it is. Uh, discuss uh, the purchase of property next to town hall. So, um, I spoke with Larry Adler, the owner, and he says he was interested in, in selling the parcel. Um, we didn't talk about price, but that's what I talked to you guys about tonight. So Frank Donato did an appraisal for us on the land. Yeah, I'm with the 
position in real time? Uh, no, you do not take the Because you're coming out with figures and assuming you're going to negotiate at some point. Yeah. But it's all we can afford anyway, so that's our first thing. So. <laughs> so I wanted to spring this to you. You guys asked me to go out and get you know, information on it. So I did. Here's an etchy you can pass this to me. It's an extra copy for it. So, do you want to read the rest of it? Do you want to move on? Commissioner uh, Victor Ferriol, his term expired at the end of December. Um, I wonder if I could have a motion to reappoint Victor Ferriol. Okay. Motion by Dave. Second. Second by Rich. Rich Lenard. Rich Lenard, Councilman Lenard. Discussion? All in favor?
So if you guys are interested in that, um, any discussion on it? Is there something budgeting for? Yeah, this would be under our budget. Um, again, I have all that today. I'll show you, but it'll be under the budget for the IT. Um, uh, that will be part of that because this will be a central unit. All the computers will hook up to it, and uh, we'll be able to scan fax everything from any computer in the town. And again, it's not the first copy machine. That's the smaller one. It's the second one. It's the um, it's the MP forty fifty five SP. And that's a total of forty-eight ninety-five um, for that And we're keeping all the other copiers we have. Or uh, one of them, um, the one that's out here, we're probably going to surplus, but all the rest we're going to keep. Do you need one? Yeah, actually, both of our heavy duty printers. One is about twenty years old. The other one's going on twelve years old. Ireland actually couldn't even service at the station the other day. They called the truck and they hauled it away. Work on it now, but we are on the last leg of it. Okay. We're able to use it. That's well, I, I was, at this point. Chief, to be honest, this same unit, I was actually going to get you. I don't know if you want to prove it tonight, but they're not ready yet, so I was going to come back to it. But if you want, we could prove it. I had this in there for the budget for their IT end of it. This was part of their budget. So if we could do, you want to do both tonight, or we could do one when they get in here, it's up to you guys. So. Well, not now because we don't want to put it built up, you know, right? We're not going to do it twice. It doesn't work out well. Okay. I, again, it's up to you, whatever you guys want to do. I don't know. Do you have a copy machine? Um, our main copy scanner that actually scans documents into our RMS system and then individual emails and so forth. Like I said, about uh, three days ago, Arlette spent two days in our station trying to fix our main scanner. Yeah, that's right. Sure. They hauled it away. It's not back at it. And Arlette had a spare in their office and they basically just owned it. Well, we got one out here that you want you want to borrow this one. It's a smaller one. I mean, it's not. Uh, yeah, as long as it can do the functions. I like, didn't keep us, keep us going. Okay. It's, it's fine. You know what I mean? Uh, All right, I'll get you something to keep you going for now. And then. We're definitely going to order you one for the for the office because that was the plan anyway. So, are these part of the current 2019 budget or part of that capital project? Part of the capital project for the IT part. There's there was servers and stuff for uh, Chief, which just would be one of the. Yeah, I'll, I'll write it on there. In fact, I put it. I got it in my book here, so I'll show you. So, so I guess we'll prove one for the town tonight. Or you want to prove two or uh, wait? It's up to you. It's, all the same. Yeah. it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. And we're not going to take delivery until they're actually in here. Make a motion we approve both copies. Motion by Dave, second by Jim. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so two of these. And then I'll go over. Chief, I'll go over this with you for the. Thank you. Yep, no problem. So from day one, I've been putting together the Bible of the new building that's here. It's always in my office if anybody wants to come take a look at it. I know pretty much all councilmen, we've discussed um, everything except for Rich. You know, you're new, but um, we, we've all discussed and, and been here for most of the meetings for uh, all the new stuff that we've done and all the things that we've changed. Uh, so I put together right here, this is an actual spreadsheet if you look here. This shows the total uh, total cost of our building, what we got from the sale of the building, um, all our contracted bids, uh, where we are up to date, actuals for 116, which is today. Next meeting, we'll have another actual today here. Uh, the budgeted amounts uh, that we've had, you know, budget, these are the numbers that I came up with. This is the numbers, the price where it came in at. 
Um, the total uh, building acquisition, uh, you know we had to pay the school tax bill. Again, the, uh, my budget and numbers are here. All your actual the dates are on there and also shows the uh, total cost of, of, of what it's gonna be. Um, also on here too, uh, we have add-ons and change orders. Uh, the numbers that's reflected in here is, is actually taken from the add-on and change orders um, that are here on the back. If you uh, go to page five, you'll see change orders and add-ons. Um, if you look here, we've had some deducts and we had some ads. Um, to date, right now, um, everything that I've actually signed and completed, we're at a negative $3,486.99. When I say negative, I mean positive to us. That means we haven't spent any additional money on change orders. We actually saved $3,486.99 as of phase one project um, that is com that's complete. Um, and and phase one. Phase one is the town hall. Yeah. Yep. Courts would be phase two and the police is phase three. Um, so now we're on the courts and you know, I will be updating that in the next meeting also. But as, as of today, everything that we've done so far, that's where we are. So if you look at your variation there, it's, it's at negative 3,000. And those are the change orders that were, were done. Um, and again, everything that I have for the building, for furniture, for everything that's in this book, it's in my office, it's right there if you guys ever want to come and take a look at it also. But the spreadsheet that I gave you tonight pretty much sums up everything. So if you look on, on page two, um, I also have on here too the budget for the ban for the IT equipment uh, that we went out for, uh, the new software and accounting payroll, 103,000, um, the new email network services, uh, 58,000, the police department server and grade, 69,000, and the mobile data terminals, 50,000. So the total IT project was 282,000 is the price. I budgeted 282,000. Uh, actual to date, we spent 176,000 of that uh, so far. And if you go here, this actually shows you a detailed list um, of the project itself. And it shows you what we've purchased. Uh, like the cheapest purchase is laptops for, for the vehicles. Um, <clears throat> you look here, we've got the uh, parks and rec management software, which we approved last year. The integrated financial management, which we approved. Our payroll mo module that we're currently using now, that Barb's using um, in here. Um, if you look, it's all uh, state pricing um, that's here for the new backup. Uh, our servers, I don't know how many bucks servers, which are not here yet. Um, again, if we approve all this, these here will be ordered. Uh, the two servers, the backup, none of that is here yet. Uh, the Dell Latitude uh, workstations are in here. Again, on state contract through Dell Direct. Um, if you look to the next one, um, the servers that we purchased here for the town, um, again, are not here yet. We're still using the old servers. We moved them over, but we will. Um, if you guys get approved tonight, we will get all those. The total cost was $62,000. Um, our police uh, department server upgrades, there's no pricing there yet because we haven't even ordered those. We haven't sat down with the chief yet and went over those, but that will put that copier that you approved tonight will be on here next meeting. We'll be under there off that 69000 So we'll still have 64000 and change to work with for the server upgrades and backups and our new uh, spam filters and firewalls. Um, there's a mobile data terminals. Uh, Chief has already ordered those. As you see, our project budgeted was 50,415. We came in at 50,189, so that one project's complete. Again, our next page is a change order and add-ons. Uh, the next is furniture and fixtures, which again, I'm gonna hand all this to Bill Cole for our insurance too, so he's, everything's documented. But if you look there, I put a spreadsheet together of each piece of furniture that we've ordered. And some of this has not been ordered. Again, if it's approved tonight, it will be ordered. Um, but right here next to it shows uh, if there's sole source, uh, if, if uh, there's uh, bidding uh, needed or there's uh, no bidding necessary, if it was under $1,000. Uh, some of the stuff is on state contract. Um, some of the stuff is sold below state contract. Uh, that's all in here. And again, not all this stuff is pretty much 
bought from big retailers. There's nothing here that was bought from you know any little store. And the total for that um, so far in furniture and fixtures is twenty five thousand five seventy nine. Um, if you look here at the beginning of the project, I budgeted for forty thousand, so we're still we're still good there. Um, You know, we have our architectural fees uh, that are there. There's still a balance of 665. Um, the new furnace, the RTU1 that went out to bid, uh, that's in here for 285. Um, that's included also in here. The building acquisition and the school tax bill. As you see, I budgeted 90,000, but we got the bill out late, so it might end up being 95,000. <coughs> And again, our numbers are still in budget, and if you look here at the budget variance so far, um, from what I budgeted to what the true pricing has been, uh, we're in the positive 128,973 going into phase two and three. So that 128 will be, you know, if we have change orders additional in the next two phases, or if we have anything that um, you know comes up that was unforeseen, but that's that's where we're at right now today. Thanks. And again, everything that's in the bills tonight, again, had not been approved yet. That's that's what's reflected. Everything that's in here, again, has not been approved by you guys or have been but it's, in here. but it's in there and it's in the bills. So if you guys look at that. And your plan is to update this every meeting now until the end of the project in April. So every every board meeting, you're gonna have a you know, a two day um, and again, I couldn't do this yet because I didn't even have the, the stuff until now. We actually had the invoices and had the pricing. But um, all the change orders and everything uh, will be in here. So if there's an additional change order, and I have some to approve for the next phase that I brought with me tonight also to take a look at. But the ones that I did approve so far, again, weren't, um, we're, we're, we're at a positive so There really wasn't any uh, additional cost that was never there. And again, I think they you know some of them because you've been with me, you know, Rich, Shane, so. But, uh, so that's that. Are you going to make this available online too? To to yeah, I, I could, that's fine. I mean, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'll, what I'll do is this whole spreadsheet, I'll, uh, I'll PDF it, and I'll have Barb put it, put it online, the, the spreadsheet that we, I did for the building. Um, We'll, we'll put it right underneath the building construction and stuff. And then also in here, um, if, if you look, in here is everything for the building. Like costs we calculated for certain material. Everything for the building is in this blue binder. Um, right down to, uh, you know, two by fours that we used that were extra that we had to use for a certain room or something. But everything's in here, all the changers, everything. It's right on my uh, desk in my office. If you guys ever want, take a look at it or take a look at, you know, any changes or anything we've done, it's, it's going to be right there. So I just got one question. Sure. On the uh, second to last page, about three quarters down, yep. there's a glass top for substance station number two. Yes. Was the state good? Is that wrong? Because the, it looks like. You went to the middle bid, 34, 10, 50. Was, is the staples number wrong? Oh, wait, maybe I got the wrong. Let's see. Stack the chip. Um, no, we bought it. We bought it from MDF Furniture for 16.26.57. Officefurniture.com had it for 21.71, and Staples had it for 23.49. So that 341050 is. Second to the last page, last top reception table or station two, and B F is 341050. I just wanted to make it a staples number was wrong. Um,
Okay, you know what I did? I had them close to Well, no, actually they were twenty three forty nine each, and and I instead of I didn't I didn't add those. So this, that's plus that's times two. Okay. Yeah, it should be forty six. Okay. And that's at Staples. Um, but the other two I added, so the table was. Uh, like 1500 and something, so I added them both together, okay. each of them. But yeah, good catch. I'll change that. Yeah, because it's 20. So, so the staple speaker is high. No, no, no. Well, yeah, because it's double. I only put one in, and the other ones I put two guesses in. So that's how it came out of that. So I'll change that. Those were four coupons, though. We're going to put some coupons in. Hey, don't laugh. On our monitors, we bought our 32 inch monitors. On Black, uh, was it Black Friday for $109 a piece? <laughs> we did in line for 17 hours. <laughs> and those are in there too. So I'm bad. Listen, if you can't get a deal, it's no fun. But, uh, all right, so that, that's, that's our whole thing. Um, number two, I think I emailed you guys. Um, the information from the architect, um, our total pricing and everything that was there. Um, and another thing that he's asking for, because I've been doing the project management for the job, was come up with a resolution that the board you know, has understood that I've been working the job and I'll be finishing it to the end. Um, because if not, um, in the email as you see, the architect for the whole project, project manager, the day by day, is a sixty-three thousand um, dollar, you know, cost of town, which we don't pay for because I've been managing it. Um, number two is um, even Joe had a recommendation. He's not here right now today, but um, he had somebody that was interested too, and they wanted to charge two thousand dollars a week. So at the time, we you know had in the budget where we wanted it to be. So you know, we started managing the job, but. The architect, just for his own benefit, wants to make sure that you know the town board understands that you guys do what you guys run the project, but wants something officially um, that says that I'm running the project and that they're not responsible for running the project. So, you know, that's something you guys can make a decision as of now what you, know, what you want to do, but um, you know, the cost associated with it, you go a different route. So. Yeah, we did, but we I formalized it in a resolution yeah. uh, because we didn't have a formal resolution uh, which indicates that you're reaffirming and appointing Paul as the project manager. Uh, he's authorized to approve change orders in an amount less than 20000 as long as he brings them to the town board at the next uh, meeting. Uh, he's authorized to run the day-to-day -day management of the project and supervise and coordinate all contractors, and that he will report the progress to the town board at each meeting and uh, provide all budgetary <coughs> information to you at each meeting. Um, he's authorized to approve field and design changes. Um, he's required to obtain town board approval if there's anything in excess of the 20,000 threshold, and he's doing this on a voluntary basis without compensation. That was for the uh, engineers one of them. It was the architect. We didn't, we didn't have a formal resolution. So here's the email from the architect. Again, I believe I forwarded to everybody. I hope I did to you, Rich. I don't know if I you got your email yet. Um, I, I forwarded this with just um, so so. There's a couple things. Um, it says to reduce the cost of professional services. The town has provided uh, the following services. The town meeting we did the, the uh, following services. I have associated the correspondence fee with had been included in my initial proposal that you could evaluate the value. So there was an electrical design value of 21,000, which we did as a town and completed ourselves. Uh, we did the data security design, which was valued at 14,000. And the construction administration on-site observation representation is valued at 63,000. It says, um, as you can see, due to the uh, contributor time and efforts of part of the town and staff, 
Uh, the total savings to the town would be $98,000 for the cost of the professional services that we initially proposed. So that, that $98,000 is what we saved uh, you know, on, on, on that for, again, electrical design, for, uh, the data security design, and the construction administration the day to day. It's huge. So we save 100 grand, um, you know, got doing it, but they want to be on paper that we're, we're doing it, not that we, you know, later on say, hey, what happened? <coughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just to show that they're not doing it because they gave us a number. So, like the electrical design, they came up with twenty-one thousand to design the building. So I did an AutoCAD and I gave it to them, and they checked it to make sure it was right, but they didn't have to do the design. So I did the lighting designs that were here, and they, they gave us a twenty-one thousand dollar credit for that. And then same thing with the data and the, and, and the security design for the IT stuff. You know, I did that design, and then they approved it. They wouldn't have to pay fourteen thousand for it. And then again, the day-to-day -day administration being here, making sure the job's going correctly. If there's change, or you know, working with y'all, doing everything like that. That was the sixty-three thousand dollars that, again, they would have done, but they had to get a fee for it. So that ninety-eight grand, it probably would be better off spent towards you know some building upgrades or other things than. Right, right, but again, just another thing, just because again, you're doing something for, for nothing, it's, it's you know, you want to make sure the process is done correctly, right? So, um, so this this here just says that again, I can give this to them, they understand that I'm running the job every day, and you know, again, if anybody has issues or any budgetary things, I will bring them to the board, and, you know, but if there's minor change orders, if you know, we have to change a, a beam, a wall because the beams or something like that, then I make those decisions during the day. And I called uh, Larry Petrie, Merritt, and uh, he told me that because this job is already bid um, out, that as long as it's under twenty thousand, there's no procurement policy for that. That's that's what I was told. You, you know what I'm saying? So if, if it hits twenty and it's a change of scope, then we have to go out to bid like we did for the firms because that was a change right. of scope. We didn't right. issue. But if it's like changing a wall for a department right. because it's unnecessary and it's a couple thousand dollars, I don't have to go out again. You know, we don't have to sit there and go out to bid or look for our fees because the guys already that were here already went out to bid for this job. So as long as I don't change the scope, we're we're in you know where we're supposed to be. And according to the law, once the contract has been awarded, uh, any minor changes come within the scope of the project and don't have to be rebid. And I was also told the best practices is every time I come up with, with like this packet that that is approved, you know, that you guys review it, approve that one, then I come next week, you approve that one, and then it just, it, it, you know, he said that's best practice. So. Very good. So I'll make a motion and uh, accept the resolution. Stephen. Second. Motion by Rich. Second by Rich. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, then, if you guys took a look at the new uh, municipal building, uh, phase one uh, budget, um, if I can have a motion to approve uh, to date uh, as of 116.19, that's been provided to you. So moved. Motion by Dave. Second. Second by Rich. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then again, like I said, this binder is in my office if anybody has anything that they want to reference. Thank you guys. <coughs> Gail, I just want to submit that to you so you have it for the
Okay, now, um, again, I, I received a call. Um, the Water Conservation for Nida County Soil Water uh, is interested in doing a program for kids. It's called an environmental thon. Um, they're looking to do it at our um, Cheryl Brook Park. They're looking for May 1st uh, from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. There'll be about 200 kids there from a night county grades 9 through 12. And it's all about uh, learning about the environment and doing different projects. Um, again, it's, it's, it's a nice uh, program. I think it'd be well, you know, well to do with the park. And um, right here is the section. Uh, they'll be using the They'll be using the uh, new farmers market uh, pavilions on that side and the two bathrooms and the two pavilions that are over by the playground. Um, so they're asking if the board is, is interested in approving that. Uh, there'll be no cost to them because um, it's for the, for the community. It's a night of county. Do they have insurance? Uh, they do. Insurance? It, it'll be a, a night of county so they'll waste it. They'll, uh, they'll put aside as additionally insured. For the program, and they'll submit that to Gail. Make a motion we approve it. Motion by Dave. Second. Second by Jim. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, um, next thing I wanted to talk about was. Uh, Um, next thing I want to talk about is um, CMY uh, Food Festival. Uh, they're interested in, in doing something from May 31st to June 1st. Um, and they're interested in having uh, craft beer and wine as part of the food festival uh, for those days. Um, this is the same group, um, Gina Scampone, that has done the uh, Utica, Utica Fest. Um, They've done a lot of stuff with uh, Rochester events, and they're interested in coming to the town in Hartford. Don't we have a prohibition down the hall in the park? That's my understanding. We have food trucks and things, and yeah, we wouldn't let anybody. Yeah, it would be craft beer, wine, um, you know, and something that, again, been done in other areas that are very nice. Are they selling it? Yeah, they'll, have, they'll, they'll, they'll be doing demonstrations of food and, and, and have a you know, live band. And, um, you know, it's pretty pretty intense, and, you know, for, it's, it's probably going to be a pack of better, I would say. No, because this is Friday and Saturday. Yeah, it's Friday and Saturday. I think the big thing is we have to see it. Yeah, because I think we get that restriction on the park. Okay. So I have to look into it. Yeah. How we would get around it. I didn't know if you could do a temporary permit or something. Well, they have to get a permit. Right. They would have to. Yeah. But our regular school, no, well. Oh, okay. Why do that? I mean, yeah, it's like we're putting I'm just saying, I didn't know if do something for the vet or something. You know, like a, Is that going to cause anything with the vendors? Um, no, because this is just Friday and Saturday. It's just a one time thing. And again, it's uh, the Central New York Food Festival. It's uh, Gina Scampone. She does. Uh, is it Utica? I'm a school she, um, she used to put yeah. on an advertisement. She publicized a lot of stuff. Yeah, she does the Utica Summer Fest. Yeah, okay, and, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, she's done this before, or she has to work? Well, she's done the Utica Summer Fest that we know of um, that's local. No, I understand. Oh. But is she in um, Salem Beer someplace else? Beer and wine? Yeah, the, the Utica Summer Fest. They do that at the, at the parks in downtown there. But I have the information here, actually, so. Will we need additional police or whatever to um, call, call out there and prove anything? 
Um, I, I really don't see a problem. It's not so big hard to police that event. It can't be hard uh, to police an event that is sugar alcohol. But this particular case would not be hard for a town department. So I'll get together with, with the counselor and, and look at it further. But I don't see an issue. Okay. She also said that she would pay for, for, for policing or did, you know, if anything, if she had to do something like that for us. So. Yeah, again, I don't know that that's, that's the logistics for you guys. Right. But uh, I just wanted to bring it in front, and um, if we can do it or something like that, she's very, very interested. So, um, you know, it might be a nice event to do hard for but again, it's only food, and that's it. Do you want me to do more? Yeah. Do this one. Thanks. Give her a bell. Thank you. <laughs> stuff we found. Um, we have here a total of all the surplus. Um, there's three sheets of it. Um, I don't know. Which one. Okay. So there's a total of three sheets of surplusing. Uh, Rick's going to go out to auction for it. Um, and I guess I need a motion to approve Rick going to auction for our surplus uh, IT surplus stuff. Who prepared for this? All right, just, okay, Mr. Sure. Warren, please. <laughs> so we're going to start with surplus okay. and then you pull Serial numbers and stuff, but what it was in a certain number. Okay. Yeah, I had Rick do it, so there's multiple people. Okay. Yeah, you did it. You did I'll make a great the motion job. we uh, declare the Poison. surplus and go out to auction. Okay. Motion by Rich. Second by Jim. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you file that yet? How's that work? Okay. Can I, I read something up over on that topic? Sure, go ahead. I'd like to take uh, the excavator. It's uh, probably a little year old. Uh, again, I don't want to surplus it, but I want to see if I can get an auction with a new one across and replace it with another new one. I think we have the past building. What do we have? Yep. So if I can be permitted to do that, I'd like to put it on the same, same time. Permission to put it on auctions international and to get what I need for another new one. If I don't, I keep it. How, how old is it? It's about uh, just uh, it's about once in one week. Would you have good luck doing that in the past? We do that with a skidster, we do that with a pickup truck. It's got 250 hours on it. It was done. I'll make that motion. Motion by Dave. Second. Second by Rich. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next is. You know how we did the uh, FEMA properties, um, which worked out great, but um, we got tax bills for those properties for um, for January, and I think uh, Herb was actually grieving um, one of them for the town hall. But yeah, the assessment date that is the fixed date is March 1st, so your tax assessment is based on who owned the mm -hmm. property on March 1st. So that's why we're getting these bills because we didn't own these pet properties until May or July. So again, on, on, on the building, we're all set because it was budgeted, but for, for these uh, FEMA projects, um, this was never budgeted anything because the total cost was supposed to be paid for everything. But since did you talk to Tom Cowan at all? I did, but he says it's after the Project. After the March 1st date. Right. Well, no, he says after the project, that's why they're not going to pay these. Oh, the project is done. Yeah. So, we have the tax bills. I, we don't have it in the budget, and I don't know where to pull it from. It's pretty pretty substantial here. We don't pay the county's going to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> they're responsible. Can you didn't want to hear that off the... Yeah. <laughs> he said it, it's not me. I didn't say it. 
Okay, so we don't want to have any further action? I mean, it's up to you. I'm just saying. Can I get an auction off? You pay the taxes on the building. But we knew that was theirs. Can we pay those in the too? Yeah, we can't pay it. I mean, we talked about $20,000 for a month. Those are all the FEMA properties. That we do not down the houses. I don't know. It's brought to you guys. I really don't. Don't tell me. They're like the paper streets we haven't paid in the county. But in the deed, is restricted. No one can ever build on this road up to buy it anyway. In fact, the one you should rush pay it. Yeah, let, let me look at yeah, it. Well, I, I, I didn't know what, you know, yeah, let me go we got him and we didn't know what to really. That was a good plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> All right, great. Moving on. Council. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, so we got um, some, some future change orders I just want to go over with you. Um, and again, I, I think this would be a benefit, but um, in the police station and in the courts, um, you know, we made it so the ceilings were open um, to save for efficiency, I think, and just to probably do an overall, you know, um, better look for our courts. Um, I'm asking to see if we can drop the ceiling in the courts, have a drop ceiling in the middle. Um, it's hard to explain, I wish I would have a picture, but um, there's like a trough that goes on, on the ends, and in the middle is going to be open to the ceiling. So what I'm looking at is getting those ceiling tiles that are kind of uh, decorative. Um, they have a drop-in ceiling tile, they're decorative inside, so they almost look like a um, 3D ceiling in a way, but they're, they're really nice. I've seen them in other like, municipalities and courtrooms. And if we add that to it, um, we need to also drop the, the sprinkler system uh, down, you know, and then the same thing in the police department. Uh, there's a few areas that, you know, at this time, now that we're doing it, we might as well, um, you know, drop in the sprinkler system and, and, uh, and the drop ceilings. So I don't pay any, any opinions on that. Well, um, the sprinkler system uh, change would be fifteen thousand five seventy seven fifty, which we still have the budget, but um, you know, I think it would give a better appearance to our courts and, and our police station. Well, no, anytime you have a ceiling, so you play poker. Anytime you have a ceiling drop, you have to have sprinklers above and, and sprinklers below. Um, so it's, it's just a code for, for sprinkler system. That's it. Uh, the tiling grid is 4756, $4,756.26 cents for, for that, for the grid. So it's just really it's it's just the cost of the, the sprinkler heads really, but again, it, it's going to give you a, it's going to give you a finish. I mean, the tiles are going to be upgraded to this; they'll be nice, they'll look like they're woodwork actually. But you were ready to keep it open before the rain was. Well, we did, the, you know, to save some costs and stuff. But you know, again, with the efficiency, I think over time it, it, it might be better to put the ceiling in, and not worry about. It. And again, we did that so we can get the building finished and complete. Now we have you know a few additional dollars. It might be the time again to do it then to start a project down the road. Might save some heat too. Oh, yeah, so definitely. Yeah, it'll yeah. definitely save some. So over time, it'll be paid for itself. Yeah, I mean it's long time. Yeah, yeah, but it, but, but again, it, it'll, it'll just bring yeah. the appearance and, and uh, you know I think it would be a, a nice choice. I mean to finish it off. So, but again, I mean that's something you guys probably. Would be well, you've made the decisions on everything else, and I don't have a problem with Yeah, and again, I wouldn't do it for that. We're, we're in budget for it. And yeah, we, we can afford it. The, uh, the changes in the police department, that's not a fancy ceiling in the chief's office, is it? 
Well, there's no fancy <laughs> ceilings. Actually, it is. Heated seats, massage chair. Huh? Heated no, seats, curious, massage chair. <laughs> no, there's the, the, actually the ceilings in the in the um, in the police department. That's where we're the taking a model of bullet 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 bullet. Bullet. Yeah, we're taking a model of the police department. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Actually, I'm taking the old tiles out of Rick's department down in the old building, and we're going to use those. Again. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I want to discuss it with you and see what you think. I, I, I think it'll just it'll just put completion to it. It'll, it'll, it'll just look a lot nicer. It'll give more light. It'll give it less, you know, sound you know, echoing in there. Yeah, I, you know, so again, it's just, it's something that we could have did in the beginning, but. So the total change is what? Well, the, the total change, uh, the sprinkler system, again, is, is about 19000 and the, um, and the uh, change in the ceiling is about 47000 mm -hmm. Yeah, you said you had that. Yeah, oh yeah, we got 128 left. We got 128 left, and that that would be enough to uh, to take care of it. And I don't really see foresee any more major change orders coming. And again, this this is something that it, it's just gonna it's our court room. And, um, you know, actually, me and Rick went to a, a judge's seminar for the whole state, and uh, they actually uh, said what a beautiful job it was and, uh, that we did in the court room and, and we turned in our plans and stuff. That was, uh, you know, what did he say, Rick? Gave it an A plus. Yeah. So, so this is this is one of the nicest jobs and plans that he's ever seen. And it was coming right from the head, Judge. Judge Murphy. No, Judge Show. For me. For me. Nice guy. Yeah, very nice. But they all praised us at the at the seminar and said, "What you know, what nice thing." It's almost built like a regional court. You know, the security of it and everything. So, well, if you look at the volume, <laughs> they do here. This is as busy as you can sit. Jim, any motion? Rich, second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So you'll you'll see those on the next uh, update. <laughs> um, I just happened to have right here. Um, you would go into executive session to uh, discuss the acquisition, lease, or sale of real property when publicity would substantially affect the value. So obviously if you're discussing uh, how far you're willing to, or how much you're willing to expend on it, that would affect your ability to purchase it. Okay. And how about a potential legal issue? Can't, you have to name it. No, so that's not what it because it might not be. All right, just, just a question. So um, we had a little Google here. As you know, we got diesel lights outside. The lights are going with diesel power because when there was a subcontractor that was hired by a plumber to cut the trenches, he cut through the, he cut the uh, conduit for the lights in three different places. So that we have no lights because of that. Um, they cut the concrete again for us. Um, we found the light. The, line where it's coming in, um, they have to rerun a new conduit up at, uh, overhead into the bottom of the 480 panel in the back. And um, the total to reinstall to reinstall the lights um, and get them back up and running is 8120. $8,120. Now, um, I think we would be able to get this back um, at the end of the job. Um, but, again, yeah, I want to read to you guys to see what, what, uh, what you guys think. But, uh, well, they've been notified. Obviously, they know they've made a mistake. And they have. They can. Uh, you say get it back at the end of the job. Uh, well, there's a retainer. Okay. That's, and then we can recover that. 
Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. We would cover that. I, I mean, so the, the guy admitted he made a mistake, but again, it just, you know. So the point is, we need these lights. We need them like, like yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, again, we, we can wait for insurance and, and, and go through all that. No. But I don't want this to be, a, you know, four weeks. We got the lights going. Okay. So we'll get the lights going, and then I'll, at the end of the project, I'll follow it up to get reimbursement for it. In fact, we're not going to charge for this now anyway. Probably won't be charged until March, April, so we'll just go along and figure it out. Let's get the lights going. Okay. So I guess I need approval for this because it's above and beyond the scope of work. Um, I'll move it. So total 81.20 to Nap Electric, which is our current contractor, to reinstall all conduit um, for the lights to 480 panel for the um, the parking lights that are out in front. And can we put pressure on them to get it done? Oh, I'll have it done in two days. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, so we'll just, okay. okay. Motion by David. Second by Jim. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, you know we won the bid for the DC for the charging stations for the car. Um, I don't know how you want to handle this, but we currently have NAP Electric here. Again, this is a change of scope of work, um, but their total labor for the installation is 86.52. We have to go out to bid because it was a DC project. So. Do you want me to come up with bid specs and deal with the gale to put the paper? And then we go out to bid for uh, material and labor. And again, it's just the material labor currently from, again, the 480 panel in the back to the side of the building with a disconnect because we can't do the underground work and stuff. That'll be an additional project. But this is just, we want to do it now before this, everything's in and then they're up above ceilings. Well, exactly. I, mean, I don't know if we can bring it. You know, but again, I told them to just give me a labor one, and then we can purchase the material separately. Because again, if they purchase material, it's a fifteen percent increase on the material that you know. I'll make a motion we go out to bid. Okay, for labor only. Yeah. And then should we do an RFP for the equipment? Yeah. We can because it's under the requirements. Right. right. They told me that when I went for so. Right. Okay. So we'll make labor a RFP for. Motion by Dave. I'll second. Second by Rich. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, I'll put that together and give it to you. Brian. Okay, the authorization uh, for Dave's call, we already did that. Yep. Did S and T also? Yep. Yep. Okay. Order of court furniture. So, um, as you know, the county uh, said they were going to give us a hundred grand um, for court furniture through the Argo grant. Um, I was informed that they only approved fifty thousand in their budget uh, this year. So I they they changed the court furniture round. Uh, so now the total is sixty-eight thousand five eighty-five fifty-nine. Um, if we buy this, we have to order it now. Um, I don't know if we can um, see if we can do some maybe in-house work or something for some of this furniture. I was talking with the, the judge, and there might be some ways we can, we can save a few dollars. But if we can, I'm asking for approval, I guess, to purchase this because it's a six-week uh, turnaround because it's all on state contract and it's from Hale Manufacturing and make it uh, just for the court. What is court furniture? Um, if you read out loud, it does the court mm -hmm. Court room bench. We presented, explained the bench in detail, relative detail. Is any of the stuff from the old courtroom able to be Sides. That's why it's going to yeah, come. Yeah. And it builds exactly this perspective for the rooms that are just 
So like we built, we, in our, our bid specs, we had built the floors elevated, so this would actually be the hill fit right into the, the elevated floor for the judges and everything. There's actually a height requirement, how many inches is they got to be and everything off the bench. Now what are you saying about the Argo grant? So Argo grant, so we're, they were only approved, the county only approved $50,000. So if we ordered this for sixty-eight or $18,000 shy, I mean, that's what I was told. We're going to get the whole 50. But again, that's not my hand. I don't have a letter. Or regardless, we need court furniture. And again, we went over, you know, we, you know, everything that we did, we went on them saying that they're going to do it for us. So. Which still fits in the budget, yeah. And we got to work the court. So, or, you might be able to bring the bench that's from over there because it's still nice, you know, what's there. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. But again, we, we got to make that decision in the next week or so. And we're going to do that to measure everything off. But, but you want to have the approval of what you're doing? Yeah, because we're going to have another meeting on February 6th. And I'm, we might not buy it. But I mean, if, if we do, we just want to make sure that we order it, that I have a special need to order it. So. And I'll move that we order the court furniture. Motion by Rich. Second. Second by Rich. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So again, whatever we can knock off that, we're going to do. Right. We can spend it doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I had an idea. Um, it's very time consuming thing that we do. We have payroll, we stuff envelopes every payroll period with the pay stubs and everything. Um, again, Barb, did you did you look into, did you call her about the payrolls? They're gonna they're looking into it right now. They just pay they just have them printed on check stub. Okay. Check stock because they their companies that they deal with have so few of checks, but they're looking into it to see what okay. they can do. So we, we might look into a way to, instead of printing everyone, because I know throw mine in the garbage and everybody else I see throws theirs in the garbage, instead of wasting all that time and effort and envelopes and paper, and, and, and again, the time that goes into it is half a day, that um, if we can get away from handing those out and just doing it electronically like most companies do now, you know, I mean, nobody really does anything. I mean, if you work at Stewart, they're, they're online, you know, you go up and get your pay stuff if you need it, if you don't, you don't go online. Because we don't have a nature type program that we're going to get it in. That's the problem. Well, I think we can look into doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, I think it's going to be a good cost savings over time. But the way now that we're doing it is just so kind of time consuming. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not worth it. So I, I'm, I'm going to look into that. I don't know if you guys have any opinions or feelings about it. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Direct deposit probably next time, you think? They're hoping that it'll be up and running for next time. We can't guarantee it, but we're hoping no. so. That's the goal. That's the goal. I know I haven't got a check since I worked with McDonald's in 25 years. So, all right, next thing, um, and I want your feedback on this, but I thought it would be nice. Um, starting in March, uh, have electronic bingo here in the town hall for the seniors, like on Thursday mornings. And uh, we can call the numbers and have, have bingo and stuff. And Who's going to call them? You were going to do the board. I yeah, the board. Oh, it's going to be a few. We'll have, we'll Take turns. Yeah. And I'd like to define seniors. What's a senior? Well, Anybody older think? than me. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come play bingo, it'll be a ball. It'll be great. I think it'll be fun, right? It's something new. We've got the space now. And we can, we got the link. We'll have the TV up by March and everything. And we can do electronic bingo. And it prints out the cards and everything. It's a great, it's, it's a great fun activity, I think. And we'll do it like on Thursday mornings or something from like 9 to 10.30 or 11 or something. Are they playing for any money or not? Well, I don't know. I, I, they're going to need a permit, right? From the mm -hmm. Commission to get to play bingo. Oh, okay. So, again, that's why I bring it up. Apparently, 
lady he knows about. Yeah, yeah. 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 big business. Yeah. Yeah. From the yeah. gaming commission. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you don't, I think, uh, as long as you don't keep any of the money and give it back, then. Well, I, that's what I want to do. Yeah, but I mean, I still think you need the initial permit, but then I don't think you have to redo it or not. I think you're changing the laws all the time. But, all right. Well, Herb, do you mind looking into that? I think it'd be a fun activity. We got the space. Everybody I tell they're excited about it. And then on Wednesdays, they got bridge. They're going to play back here in the morning. Because, you know, so they have room. So they have the bridge tournaments back there. That's great. A little bit of wine? Not in the morning, no. <laughs> I guess we'll have to postpone it until the afternoon. <laughs> Well, that's what I was thinking. Tell me the bartender, right? <laughs> we got cameras outside, too. Yeah, but not in here, you know. What I mean. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, if you, if you guys probably right, yeah. Yeah. it'll be fun. So, uh, okay, cool. Okay. All right, another thing. I've been getting a lot of calls, a lot of talk. You know, we have a new building for town work. Um, a lot of people were asking about naming the town and Hartford building. A lot of people have called and said, oh, you want to put your name on it? So I did just, just wanted to discuss for you guys, uh, you know, I don't have any reason or anything that I would ask you how to name it after me, just to make that call. But we're living in so many phone calls. But I do, I do have a recommendation. You know, that. Yeah, I do, <laughs> but, I, but I do have a recommendation I thought would be really nice. And I, and I thought if we, we named it, like the Veterans Memorial building, and then maybe on the back wall, like have all the, the vets from, from Harvard, you know, families want to buy little plaques and stuff, we can, we can put all their names and stuff on the back wall. But I thought that would be a nice thing so that the town of Harvard supports their veterans, and you know, the, the courts after us support the veterans, and it would be something that, uh, you know, get a, I think it would be a nice gesture. So, um, you know, in saying that, um, you know, we're gonna have to build a plaque Next couple of weeks and we'll figure all that out. I'd like your feedback on it. But, uh, I, I agree. I think that would be a very good uh, It's not just veterans, but it's, uh, it's well, yeah, veterans memorial. Um, and I know you're planning some sort of a ribbon cutting or open house. Correct. And at that, I would suggest that we invite. Certainly, uh, the Hartford American Legion, but all of the legions, Clarks Mills, Whites Down, have them all come in on that date. Uh, and it's it's not just New Hartford, but area veterans. Uh, oh, I agree. I agree. A, a good idea. And I think you know having this back wall here, um, you know, what better place but to actually, you know, put the little plaques up and stuff like you see when you go to different areas and things and people that that, uh, that served. No, it'd be nice to have it in our town hall. Sure, it's identified on the front of the building also. That's what I mean. No, we'll actually call it the Town of Hartford Veterans Memorial Building. Right. And then and here would be the actual you know, dedication to the veterans. And, you know, kind of have some eatings here or something if they like. Or, but uh, I, I thought that'd be a nice nice gesture. Again, something that you know, uh, the town supports. This is the town hall. I mean, this right. is like where the 
clerk's office is, you know, codes, you know. I just don't want to. Then we think it's a big <laughs> Right. <laughs> and we play a big right? right? What order we want? Right. Bingo, yeah. Bingo. So you think you're looking for the spirits of the hatch rate. Sorry, you think you just, the uh, the room? The room. Mm -hmm. And, you know, have a, a, our, I don't know how from this pallet building, this building. Right. And then this here we have got a Yeah, well, again, I hope it for discussion. Yeah. I just thought it would be a good one as well. And then, as far as the line, we look at it. What would that be okay with the plate? Well, they have, they have like stainless steel plates that go on a whole big board, like I've seen it when I was down in Miami, that they have them in the parks, you know what I mean? And they're up, and then people would buy an actual plate, and you'd put it in there, and it would list all the people. And on the top, you'd say, you know, Veterans Memorial for New Hartford, or something, you know, whatever you wanted to say. And it just looks nice and clean and fresh. I was the That's it. That's exactly. You know what I mean? I wonder if that, I mean, that would be true, too. Yeah. That was really nice there. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it's really expensive. I'm sorry. Paul starts bracing it out. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. Go by Evo and all, all the different guys. Right, so it's just something for you guys to think about and, uh, you know, maybe talk about the next meeting if you guys have any opinion. Okay, um, the chiller, we talked about approving that. Um, put money extra in the budget last year for the chiller for the payment. Um, let me give you guys the. So as you know, the rec center has needed a chiller for a while now. We talked about it previous board meeting years ago. Um, I got the power authority um, actually does these projects for towns and villages. Uh, they gave me a, a quote here. Um, they gave me a quote for the chiller for the construction costs um, installed and uh, total package cost after finances, 389,337. And then again, that's because their interest rate's at 4.5%. Um, and they have extra costs in here, like asbestos abatement, which there's no asbestos there, so that would come out. Um, there's uh, different design uh, monitoring and stuff. There's extra, this, this is worst case scenario for the unit that's there. Um, and again, it's through the power authority. So if you look at that, that number that 389 there, um, what we could do with something like that, if um, Jim, you were talking about was, uh, going out to look for, the, take care of the road and stuff, you might want to look at that, putting that into uh, the bond also because it would lower the rate. Yeah, and, yeah, and not only that, you would get the savings from you know, the cost to run the old machine, plus last year I think we put 15,000 to the old machine. Wow. So, I mean, you know, looking at that, even if it's gonna cost us 29,000 a year, if we do the four and a half, I think it goes down to like 20, 26,000 and change, if we go down to three and a half percent. Um, we put that in the budget this year and we put it in the budgets for the years, but again, it's gonna make our contraction go down too also because you know, we wouldn't be paying for all the repairs that we had, the grind, and the, you know, the cost of the electric that's going to the current system. more efficient. Oh yeah, this is, this is a top of the line brand new unit. You know. Did you have to make any tools for the I, I Well again, I don't know because it's through the power authority. I think they go out to bid. I think that's how it works. I'll find out more, but I want to at least get you, this is what they came out with a project summary. Um, again, if we prove this through power authority, they do everything. It's A to Z, we don't do anything, we don't bid for it, we don't, they do everything themselves. 
Um, the only thing the question is, do we buy the three and a half percent or do we finance through them at four and a half percent? And then again, if they don't use these costs, they don't charge it. So again, this is worst case scenario, that's the price for it. But anything here that they don't use, like they get contingency 10%, if they don't use it, they're not gonna charge 21,000 for nothing because it's the power of it. Um, it's through New York State, it's the energy efficient program that they had. <coughs> That was one of the things we, you know, we talked about. We definitely got upgrade. So it's on its last leg. If we put a new unit in there, um, you know, we love new training on it. Everybody will know how to use it. And it's pretty. So, you know. but you're estimating a nine, over nine thousand dollars energy savings. Right, crap, a year. A year. Yep. From our bill that we have now, so we save the nine there, and then we save the other four in the interest. Plus, if we save the, the, you know, the repair or not, that's the key. The repairs, they, they give you approval for what, 10,000 or 9,000? Yeah, and, and again, it's just, yeah, that head gas could go over and it's done. It's right. We're talking $25,000 repair. So the savings, that's the nice savings. Two plus the, if you go one percent less, thirteen thousand. So it takes that down essentially to. Well, we just the, the, the percent savings would only take this down. The the, the cost of the savings, the nine thousand, is already in this. And in the price, yeah. So the nine thousand is in the price. But really, the cost of the unit. I mean, that's because of all the financing too. Um, if you really look at it, the construction cost is two hundred thousand, and again, a lot of these things we're not going to have, but they have to put them in there because they don't. Because I guess when they go out to bid and everything, they have to have a set price, and if they don't, if it's over, then it kind of messes them all up. So, but the total energy savings per year is nine thousand two hundred thirty-four dollars, and then maintenance savings—that's whatever we've been spending. It's not out of here because they don't know what we spend on repairs for that machine. And then again, the only other part to this that, that's different is we go out to buy a three and a half or we stay at four and a half with the power card. So there's really only two <coughs> options here. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess I guess we got to look at this. Um, we got to talk about an executive session about the property next door, and then we got to talk about your road also, and then figure out how we want to get that. Yeah, the end result is then I don't know what the total bond price is, and if that makes sense, then we have to approve, you know, purchasing this, approve purchasing, or going out again. We have to go to the paper and all that for the property and your road. We got to keep saying. So I guess it's all one package that maybe we should talk about the property next door and executive session and come out and let's talk about these last three things and put it to see where we want to be. Relating to the acquisition of real property where publicity would substantially affect the value. Yeah. Oh no, we'll do that when we come out. The value to pay them? Okay. Why did you do that now? Did everybody check out the value? No? Okay. I have put a few No, why don't you get good? I mean, it's up to you. We can do it after. We'll do it after. Yeah. All right. I have a motion to go to executive session. And Two. also to discuss uh, litigation as it relates to 9546 Chapman Road. Second. Second by Dave. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
So you know what, everybody can just stay here. We're going to go to our conference. Room. Do that now. Oh, Paul. Yeah. Dave. Second. I Come out exactly second. Motion by Jim. Second. Second by Dave. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.